morning welcome back to the channel so this week i'm doing an update on the new tires review on the tires i've had the tires on for a week now and i, I put about 800 miles on them just to see if what i was noticing on the tires was uh, a fluke based on uh you know the maybe the chemicals they use when they build the tires or or what so i ended up going with the Dunlop Trailmax Missions and I went with them because of the couple of tires that I read that had decent reviews and uh, got higher mileage these ones were the only ones that were currently available for the KLR I didn't want to go back with the the Dunlop 760s that came with the bike now not because they're a bad tire I mean I was I was down on the wear bars at about 4,800 miles and I pushed those tires all the way to 6,000 miles with absolutely no issues at all. The, the fronts were kind of cupping a little weird and the back was, was pretty well balled down the center from, you know, ripping down the interstate. But I did get, I did get 6,000 miles out of those tires. So I'm not unhappy with that. The trail maxes, people are going 8,000 plus miles on this light of a bike, this narrow of a tire. I'm probably expecting probably closer to 10. We'll see how it how it fares through the rest of the riding season. So let's get on to the tire. So tire has big lug pattern on the back. The problem with this, this is a very hard compound. I mean, I've got 800 miles. I haven't even worn any of the nubs off the tires at all. The other day, while I was riding on this tire, I had to brake hard in traffic. Now, I wasn't tailgating anybody. It was just traffic came to a sudden stop and all at once because of somebody about three cars up in front of me. I couldn't. I had a Prius in front of me, F-150 in front of him, and then there was a box truck in front of that guy. And the box truck is the one that locked it up. Everybody had to stop immediately. And... I went into an artificial skid with this this bike. I mean, I went into a skid, but it wasn't a needed skid. I was riding on that concrete. It was dusty out, and uh, the second I touched the brakes, the back locked up on me. The front, the front gripped just fine, and I'll show you what they look like here in just a minute. So I, I went into a sideways skid while trying to brake in a straight line. Now, I was able to let up off the brakes, brake again, go back into a skid immediately, and then I was able to get uh, maneuvered around because at that point in time, I was now caught up to the traffic that had stopped easily. Now, if I had had the six, the 760s on still, it would have stopped just fine. This one, because of the bigger surface area on this small tire and the dusty conditions, this tire had no traction whatsoever. And I was completely sideways. Now, I was able, like I said, to get this bike stopped and not have an accident not go down but this is this is a very hard compound tire because of the hard compound the tire is not really great on road and it's not really great off road it's a a lot of compromise the tire now on the side of it the lugs are a smaller surface area so cornering i never feel like i'm going to blow this bike out in a corner and I've, I've cornered it pretty hard, but stopping in less than ideal situations, such as needing to stop immediately or having dust on a very close grain road surface. Uh, over there in Boise, they have changed everything over to the concrete with the grooves, and the grooves aren't deep. And so compared to asphalt, the, the gripping surface is much tighter so a little bit of dust on there like we have on a daily. I mean, we live out in the desert. The dust blows in every day. Vehicles ripping down the road, bring that dust with them. And it creates an almost glass-like surface. Now, with the Dunlop 760s that were on here, I never experienced that. I, break, I, I had to brake hard several times in that area. And I never once had a situation where the bike was coming out from under me. When I had to brake hard the other day on this bike and it came out from under me, it was immediate, instantaneous, and not needed. So I was able to keep the bike upright, 
but the hard compound didn't help. And the tires never really quite warm up. They're, they're narrow on this bike. Tires, the top, any tires narrow on this bike. So there's a lot of surface area. If it was a wider tire or a heavier bike, it would have helped in that braking situation. But even then, due to the dust and everything on the road, it still would have been interesting. Now, because of the big wide surface area and hard compound, when it's off in dirt, it, it is also not a great tire. Now, I'm not saying the tire is bad. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy the tire. I'm just saying that for the KLR 650, you should really look at what you're doing before you mount this tire. And I would highly recommend this tire for an ABS model. A non-ABS model like this, it, it's just not a great tire. Now, the front, on the other hand, really is a good tire, even with the hard compound. I never have a problem with the front losing traction. I never have a problem with the tr front tracking weird. And in a braking situation, even on dust cement roads, the front grabbed, the back didn't. And so that, that had me sideways. And then I had to use the momentum of the bike to get it back upright and then go back into a skid again to get stopped in that situation. And the front held up and break, broke perfectly fine. I mean, it was, it was no qualms there. Due to the fact that this tire is hard, this tire, I have a feeling, is going to hold up for a long time. I have a feeling the front won't, though. I have a feeling that I'm going to get 8,000 plus miles out of the back, no problem. I have a feeling I'll replace the front at least once in that same time frame, just because it is a smaller tread pattern. It doesn't feel like it's as hard of a compound, and so I feel like it'll probably start cupping a lot like the 760 did pretty early on. Now the 760, when I took the front tire off, it was cupped really bad, but I was nowhere near the wear bars. I could have probably got another 2,500, 3,000 miles out of the front. But due to the cupping on that front tire, it added a lot of vibration into the mix. The back was not adding a lot of vibration because it was smooth, man. It was a road slick. And this tire with its heavy, thick compound, same thing. I mean, it's, it's a road slick. So over here on the front, we have a much different tread pattern. We still have big surfaces, but they're broke up horizontally and they're broke up diagonally. And these, these V grooves on them are kind of, kind of weird. Like the, the smaller lug is an arrow pointing one direction. The bigger lug is an arrow pointing the other direction. And uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just when I first saw when they put it on, I actually checked to make sure they had the rotation correct. So the front doesn't feel I can squish this lug all around on this tire. No problem. The back doesn't do that. Same thing. I've put uh, 800 miles on these tires. I've worn the nubs on the front. Some of them aren't quite broke off yet, but they're, they're bent all the way over. And so these nubs are wearing down just fine. The back aren't. The back are still there. So that tells me that this is a softer compound than the front, even though they're, or than the back, even though they're the exact same tire. So, and like I said, this one had no problem on the dust, on the concrete groove road. This thing had no problem getting traction. It was the back that didn't. That wider surface area, the bigger lugs that are offset on the back, really made for a hard braking situation that wasn't that great. It wasn't a good experience. So in conclusion, do I recommend these tires? It's going to depend on what you're wanting to do. If you're going to tour the United States on a bike like this and you're going to pound highway miles, man, they're, these will hold up for you really well. And of course, I'll update as we go and let you know how they hold up. But you're going to have to think about what you're doing. If you're going to ride inclement weather, I, I, I'm going to bet in the rain, these tires suck. I'm going to bet in a little bit of snow, these tires suck. On this bike, not saying they're not going to work for you on a bigger bike. If, you know, if you're riding a BMW 1200, these tires are probably just fine. On the KLR, you're going to get a lot of miles out of them, not have to change tires, but you're going to have to compromise. You're going to, you're going to definitely have 
bad days in the dirt and you're definitely going to have bad days in the inclement weather. So if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you guys know that I absolutely ride this thing like a piss missile down the interstate and ride well beyond what this KLR was ever designed to do. This thing was not ever designed or meant to ride this thing sustained 80 miles an hour for you know 6500 miles it, it wasn't meant for that and it's holding up great it is but when you're when you're riding this bike you're gonna have to decide what you want this is a big dirt bike that kawasaki has moved into more of the adventure market these bikes go for hundreds of thousands of miles if you ride them at 55 and 65 miles an hour i don't know that mine's gonna go a hundred thousand plus miles riding it at 80 every day and we'll know more next week is going to be the update i'm going to have them check the valves on it it's going to be the 7500 mile uh, update where they check my valves and change my oil and uh at that point in time i'm going to pop cases i'm going to look at the doohickey i'm going to see how the bike is actually holding up from an internal uh standpoint other than that the bike still rides nice and uh you know, part of the reason I wanted a tire with this style tread pattern is because of the fact that I ride this thing down the interstate and then on the weekends, you know, we take it camping, we, we take them uh, up to the lake, we do, you know, we just go on little adventures with them. And so I wanted an affordable tire that was going to hold up for the miles I put on. I, I didn't want to have tires that I was replacing every other month and then had my what I wanted to do adventure wise cut short because you know, Hey, I don't have enough tire to go and hit the dirt and do this because the, the nice thing about this bike is it's affordable to get into. It gets great fuel mileage. And so even though I'm riding this thing 168 miles every day, four days a week for work, I still am enjoying getting out and hitting the trails and going on small adventures with my wife and the bike is still affordable enough. I mean, my insurance is like 300 bucks a year, full coverage, comprehensive replacement, um, fuel mileage, you know, I'm still hitting that 50, 55, depending on where I'm driving at. And so the clincher was always going to be for me. It was going to come down to the tires. If I was having to spend three, $400 extra every other month on a set of tires, you know, that wasn't, that wasn't going to work for me. And so we'll, we'll see how they hold up. Uh, obviously now I know I need to allow more, more, uh, room for stopping, which in, in, on the interstate in Boise, that, that's hard to do, man. If you give them four car lengths, you're going to have four cars stuffed in there. And so it's, it, it's a lot of maneuvering around and adjusting to give myself room, uh, for, you know, what could happen with this tire. Uh, Overall ride, a lot smoother. It's a lot smoother than the 760s the bike came with. And uh, you just got to pay attention to what you're, what kind of traction you're not going to get with this bike on and off-road. Um, off-road adventures are going to be kind of weird. I've done a little bit of dirt in it, done, done about 35 miles of dirt on them. And like I said, they were fine. I was up on the bike and kind of whipping it around in the dirt. No big deal. But... When we go on our bigger adventures, I've got a kid that sits here with me as well as panniers on the bike. And so it's going to change kind of some of the areas that I might be willing to get into with the kid on the back uh, just because of the tires. Like but Sawyer has sat on the back of many of my bikes, my dirt bike, my street bike, uh, now my KLR. I mean, this kid sleeps on half our rides. And so I'm not worried about necessarily going far and going crazy with the kid on the back it's just going to be that with the reduced traction of these tires off-road is going to make me rethink some of the places that i would normally go without hesitation so we'll see we'll see how it goes many adventures coming up obviously i think next week we're doing our jump creek that we talked about in our hot springs video um we'll have the 7500 mile update coming up so yeah I mean, it is what it is. The tires were, I got paid three twenty five plus another hundred for mounting and balancing. And, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get 10,000 miles out of them on this bike. This bike isn't heavy enough for the hard compound on the tires. So it's, uh, unfortunately I'll probably be on them the rest of this season and not enjoy them.
So, but they'll hold up really good on the freeway. Thanks for joining me, guys.